from Lionsgate by way of Bestron video. It is Candyman Day of the Dead, which is also Candyman 3 of the original trilogy uh, of films before they came out and made another one. This is uh, from 1999. I'm pretty sure it was straight to DVD in 1999 because I remember seeing this thing at Blockbuster Video. I think it was in all the mom and pop places that were still around then. Uh, it's, 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 it's not the best, but I don't think nobody expects it to be the best. It kind of seemed like where you could use that terrible term people like to use the elevatedness of the first two films kind of gets threw out to the side for a more, you know, amped up version of the Candyman. Still play with Tony, Tony Todd in this one. And it at least knows what the people want because it stars Donna D'Errico from Baywatch. And it opens up with her in her underwear. So, yeah. That's what you're getting here. Nonetheless, it kind of follows the, the normal tropes these movies have. It's, it's like uh, she is apparently a relative to the Candyman character. Doesn't really believe in it, but then she's opening like an art gallery thing, which features his artwork. And, um, you know, he gets invoked. He comes back. He kills everybody she knows pretty much. And it's looking more and more like she probably did it. Or at least her friend who she runs into in this movie and makes along the way. It looks like he might have done it. So it's one of those deals where you got racist cops. You got people who don't believe what's going on. And she has to figure out a way to get rid of the Candyman while he's stalking her and telling her to be basically a sacrifice for him and to make people believe in him again and to, you know, do what Candyman does, which always consists of killing people with a hook and stalking hot white women that he seems to want to have something to do with in a sexual nature, even if technically he's related to him. So yeah, that's, that's Candyman Day of the Dead. Hokey CGI, kind of a hokey plot in some regards. I mean, the movie does some questionable things. It's a little it's a little goofy, maybe too goofy for some in some regards in some areas. But um it's at least watchable, even if it isn't necessarily what you refer to as good. Uh might make a dope feature worth watching with Tales from the Hood. If you want to watch Tales from the Hood first and like oh, start this when you're falling asleep, it might be good. But like I said, this is the first time it's on Blu-ray. Uh it's got a pretty good little little arsenal of special features there and of course it's got the slip case with the new art which looks pretty nice i don't know if we did do it they do a reverse cover for this one no they didn't they didn't do a reverse cover but you get the voodoo code in there so you can get it online and watch it which you can scan that if you want to i've already redeemed it so you can't steal it uh special features include audio commentary with the director curry meyer who i don't think had really done anything prior to this besides like a few tv shows and it's got the producer also in on that. Isolated score. Uh, interviews on the hook with Tony Todd. A Bloody Legacy. An interview with special uh, prosthetics effects designer. Decay and Design. Interview with the director of photography. English to German trailer. Home video promo. Home video trailer. Steel gallery. So it's not bad. It's got some stuff on there. So it's, it's not the best movie ever. I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five. But... It's worth a watch, and it's nice to see it on Blu-ray. Uh, CGI moments are terrible. CGI looks pretty bad in this, to be honest, which, of course, this was a time when CGI was really, really bad. But the practical effects that it does bust out here and there are okay. The kills aren't necessarily that spectacular, but you get a lot of bees. You get a lot of Donna D'Errico running around very skimpy clothing, uh, showing off her assets. And you get Tony Todd, who is never bad, in my opinion. Still, two and a half out of five. In Walmart right now, if you want to own this, I'm a little late to the party on the review. But this is number 24 in the Vestron series. I still have to get uh, Maximum Overdrive, which is probably going to cost me an arm and a leg at this point. And I still have to get Steel Dawn but, and Slaughter High. But then I have all of these. Although my first two don't have slip cases, the uh, Chopping Mall and what was the Blood Diner? But... So, you know, my OCD is, is in there, but I'm I'm making it. But that's beside the point. If you like these, I like these. They're still coming out with more of them in the future. Walmart's got them at a very affordable, like 13 bucks price. Sometimes they drop down lower if uh, they don't sell very well, which is not necessarily a good thing, but at least it's way more affordable than the original batch of these. So for 12 bucks, 13 bucks, Candyman on Blu-ray, Candyman 3, even if it ain't that good, still seems like a worthy buy to me.